this video we will be discussing or just kind of going over Procter and Gamble's uh, recent quarterly report. Today is October 20th, 2020, and they just basically released earnings. It is about 9 o'clock in the morning, so this has been out for maybe an hour or so. I'll probably get this video later on in the day. I do have some other pending videos, but I think this is kind of more important, so I'm just going to push those videos back. If you guys like the quality of this new microphone, I've spent like an hour to customize it even more settings because I, I didn't like how the previous mic sounded or the settings on it. So just doing some more stuff in post, trying to make it sound nicer. So on Procter Gamble's website, you can go to Investors Relations, go down to Presentations and Events, right here they'll have their uh, like conference call and stuff. Uh, I would like to go to the conference call, however, I think they already did it. So you can check out the earnings release. I have it here. However, um, it doesn't let me highlight using my highlighter thing. Like, I can, like you guys can see, but I can't highlight it basically, and that kind of annoys me. Annoys me because I like to highlight stuff. It just feels fun. So if you want even more information, it's probably better to read the news release uh, because it gives all the accurate numbers, as opposed to the press release, the one that we're gonna read because it kind of I think it shortens the information and stuff. Okay, so let's get into it. I actually have not. Check real quick. Uh, Procter Gamble. How are they? Uh, in pre-market, let's go to the hourly. Uh, you know they're up uh, about two percent, one percent. Nothing significant, but again, it's not like it's a growth stock, so it's gonna behave differently. Let's go back. Fiscal year 2020, first quarter. That is weird. We're now we're in now in 2020. I guess fiscal year. Net sales with nine percent organic sales, nine percent diluted EPS. So I guess real quick, why I like Procter. It's just a good company. It's been around for a while. It has a good like dividend and stuff. It's just um, they got kind of political with Gillette, and I didn't like that. However, um, in case if you're unfamiliar, you know they they have and they're in the beauty, grooming, healthcare, fabrics, feminine care. They they got a lot of stuff. These are the brands. You know, Head and Shoulders. You got Olay, Old Spice, Gillette, Crest Oil B, Downey, Gain Tide. Basically, all the consumer defensive like stuff. So that's one thing. Back to this diluted net APS is up 20% versus prior year. Um, I'm just kind of scanning to see if I see anything. Uh, net sales uh, 19.3 billion for fiscal first quarter fiscal year, an increase of 9% versus the prior year, excluding the impacts of foreign exchange. To diluted earnings name per share were 1.6, increase of 20% versus the prior year. So judging from the last year they're actually doing a little bit better operating cash flow 4.7 billion for the quarter uh, that's pretty big the company returned 4 billion to cash via 2 billion of dividend payments and 2 billion of comic wow i, I like that a lot this whole sentence is basically just pretty good you know buying back uh two billion dollars worth of stock as well as giving you know, a total of $4 billion to dividends and dividends. That's a pretty significant amount of uh, average cash flows. For. So, I mean, they did a lot of their cash flow went right to paying back the or, uh, shareholders, which is interesting. I do like that as, like, a investor, but, you know, that's not leaving a lot of room for other stuff. So, we'll have to go check out their cash flow statement after this. I'm just going to read this. It seems important. We delivered another strong quarter of organic sales growth per share and cash return to shareholders enabling us to increase our outlook for fiscal year results the Dave Taylor chairman president CEO our near-term priorities continue to be employee health and safety maximizing ability of PG products for customers around the world and helping society meet the challenges of the crisis we remain firmly focused on executing strategies and superior priority constructive disruption and improving Procter and Gamble's coverage organization and culture to deliver balanced top line and bottom line growth. Strong cash, okay. 
basically this is all of this just in this chart but I, I think this is kind of more important to explain kind of the reasoning behind this um personal rank sales increased high single digit driven by innovation led growth blah blah blah, blah and then teens so sub sanitizer personal cleansing group wow a personal cleansing group that's not really a surprise people are you know wanting to clean themselves more because i can i don't i guess people didn't clean themselves before but now they have a reason greater china sk11 grew over 20 percent. what is that but 20 percent in america was missing the growth okay grooming segment organic increased six percent first the prior year appliance organic sales increased more due to innovation and demand and uh, so the grooming segment increased about or appliance organic so like i guess things such as razors this actually makes a lot of sense not only are styling products like hair groomers and like buzzers increasing in price because of lack of supply but they also you know put more people are also buying this stuff more because they can't go to the barber i mean i've been doing my hair for the last five or six years i've saved a lot of money but i guess now people are kind of catching up board too and it makes so much sense you save so much money just by doing your own hair shave care organic sales are unchanged single high digit girl the female razor blades was offset by market softness and male blades uh, that's actually interesting so drive shaving styling products and stuff like that increased but normal razor blades i guess fell that's interesting Healthcare segment organic sales increased 12% for the quarter. Oral care organic sales increased mid teen globally with single digit quarter. Uh, currency devaluation prices increased mix. Groups on higher organic sales increased size, single digits, prominent innovation. Uh, increased consumption probably. Okay, nothing too big in the healthcare, I guess. Fabric and home care segment organic sales increased 14%. That's pretty significant, actually. Fabric organic, and I guess. Back in here, organic sales did increase by 12%. That is a great amount, especially for an established company like Procter Gamble. Uh, see, uh, where was I? Uh, for every car sales increase, high single digits, driven by high teen growth in the North American region through new innovation. Home care organic sales increased more than 30%, driven by increased consumer demand for home cleaning products during the better. I think that was your growth. Yeah. Dish care, surface wear. This, I mean, this whole sentence makes a lot of sense. People are buying stuff to clean their homes, and Procter and Gamble supplies that. So that's so that's important. Uh, baby family care organic sales increased by four percent. This actually kind of surprised me. I feel like this segment would actually decrease a little bit. Family care sales increased double digit, probably due to uh, wow, they increased double digit. Okay, so baby organic sales, yeah, baby organic sales decreased with the single. This is kind of what I was uh, expecting, you know, it just, just makes sense. Overall, I mean, they did, I think, for, judging from my point of view, they did pretty good. But it's, should they have been done better? Because this is the company that basically supplies all these products to the people that need, you know, cleaning stuff, grooming and stuff. So, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, the other net earnings, a 20% increase the prior year, driven by increased net sales and increasing operating margin. You always like to see good operating margin, in my opinion. And uh, we need to know how much it increased up. That, I don't care about the looted, uh, blah, blah, blah. Or, uh, gross margin increase by 140 basis point. Or, unfavorable foreign exchange impact to gross margin. Okay. Sales generated general and administrative expenses as a percentage of sales they decrease 160 basis points. As on a report basis, a uh, percentage of sales decrease due to non recurring charges. Okay, uh, for people foreign exchange, they have impacted. Uh, that's not 10 basis points, is isn't too much, but something to keep in mind. On a currency neutral basis, uh, for the prior year, uh, this point, sale leverage benefit, uh, blah blah blah. More, okay, uh, operating buffer margin increased approximately two first step. That's pretty good. Uh, okay. Right, let's go down see their guidance. P&G raised its outlook. Oh wow, raised outlook for fiscal 20 and all 
all sales growth in all ranges of 1% to 3% in all range. The revised range includes an estimated 1% negative impact from foreign exchange. The company raised hell of earning asset growth range 2 to 4%. Okay, so they're actually raising guidance. That is big for Wall Street, you know. So, um, I'm actually surprised. It's... That's interesting. That kind of changed my thoughts because you want to see these companies raise guidance. The company said now it compacts fiscal 2021 gap to include the earnings per share growth in, uh, in a range. So, earnings, net earnings per share growth, I guess, diluted in a range of 5%. Um, that's interesting. Now, includes non core charges in a range. Guidance for core earnings per share growth from a range of uh, 37% to 5 to 8%. Uh, okay, the small increase in earnings per growth. The company said the current outlet includes headwinds that approximate to and separate tax and foreign exchange impacts. 50 million after a higher tax, uh, uh, 100 million. Basically, all these taxes, wow, a lot of money in taxes. The company is not able to reconcile its forward looking GP cash flow measurement measure without unreasonable efforts because the company can upper timing about. I mean, that makes sense. The company estimates fiscal adjusted uh, 2020 cash flow productivity to be around 95%. PG expects to pay approximately 8 billion in dividends. And wow, wait, 8 billion in dividends. The company increased how it comes up a range from 6 to 8 billion. In Wow. What the heck? This is... Are you guys reading this too? Is this true? Hold on. The, let me just read this again. Could b and expect to pay approximately 8 billion in dividends in the fiscal 2021? The company increased its outlook for common stock repurchase from a range of 6 billion to 8 billion to a range of 7 billion to 9 billion in fiscal 2021. Now plans to return 15 to 70 billion of cash to shareholders in this fiscal year. If we go back up, oh yeah, one thing I don't. It's a company returned 4 billion to cash shareholders via 2 billion dividend payments, 2 billion income. Is this just this quarter, or is this all year round? That's one thing I want to take a look at actually real quick. Hold on, we're just going to Procter Gamble's uh, Yahoo Finance page real quick. Um, I know we need cash flow. Let's check something. Repurchase of no uh, financing. Dividends paid. They do about seven point like five billion each uh, quarter. Seven point five billion. Oh no, annual though. Okay, seven point five billion each year. Consistently, they have been increasing. Um, interesting. So, they're actually looking to, so they are looking to, each year, you know, they had six to eight billion roughly, you know, they've wanted to keep that, but now they're looking to increase that. The, the seven to nine billion is still within their range that they've always been paying. So, it's not like, oh wow, it's amazing. But at the same time, I guess they're looking to increase it. But what I'm, they plan to return 7, 15 to 70 billion to care shareholders. So that means, let's say they do 7 billion. Or they're probably not. They're probably going to do probably 8 billion in dividends. Just estimate. I don't know. Really brief estimate. So that leaves about 8, 9 billion. Wait, I'm dumb. So that leaves about 7 to 8 billion in repurchasing stock so we can go down to repurchase stock last well last year they bought a lot i guess they really saw what happened in the pandemic but you know we gotta buy it whoops wrong with this this one repurchase capital stock uh now plans to return 15 to 17 billion so yeah they're they're looking uh, probably within this same amount of range this year but it's like when are they gonna buy that's the big thing i do like that though so this is their forward-looking statement. It's basically just all the uh, legal stuff. Now we get down to some uh, like charts. So this is referring to the three months end of September, uh, the quarter end after 2019, or in comparison to 2019. Uh, operating income is up 23%. Net sales up 9% gross profit. This is the big 
like one that like you know you definitely want to see increase in operating margin or operating income income for tax up to it wow are they growing so much what the heck uh tax rate is pretty high i don't I, I actually even like stopped looking at like net earnings just because tax rate is so high you just want to look at like the, the, this number you know and uh operating income at least that's for what i do dividends for sure they increased about like five cents from the prior quarter <laughs> I just want to check how much is that roughly, uh, about 5 to 5 by point seven. That's like a 6% increase, wow, roughly. Uh, gross profit, I don't like my look at that. Uh, there's a better chart, increased uh, amount of millions.
much money they're giving back to shareholders. That's crazy. That's really good. Uh, you know, they are really extended already. But, um, that doesn't mean they can't go up, you know? Like, look at, like, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. But anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. I might take a position on this. I don't even know. It just seems too spicy for, like, uh, this rest of the year. I was kind of waiting for this to see what would happen anyway, so, yeah, like the earnings, um, anyway, yeah, thank you all for watching, let me know what you thought below, and, uh, I'll see you.